What's going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. Welcome to another glorious installment from the Reef Builder Studio. And for today's video, I wanted to just do a little bit of work on one of my prized torch corals. Depending on when you live, it might be a holy grail or dragon soul. Um, but it's this guy right here that's kind of dark with some orange tentacles and some yellow tips. And the reason I want to take him out is a couple of reasons. One, there is a kind of like a benign style of flatworm that um, loves to grow on top of the lots of different LPS, but they particularly love the euphilia. And it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not the worst thing. Um, some corals will get like a kind of a heavy infestation, but then we'll do a dip and it'll completely go away. And um, others, uh, over time, it's just the population, the sheer number of those flatworms um, kind of restricts the coral's ability to breathe and to capture light. So two corals we're gonna work on today is the Holy Grail slash Dragon Soul torch right there. You can see he's grown out into kind of a big mass from the rock and it's shading the frog spawn there down below. So the purpose of working on the uh, Holy Grail torch is kind of twofold. I want to not really frag it up and frag it out, but mostly just kind of reshape it a little bit and maybe make a couple clusters and get it a little bit closer to the rock so it shades the frog, the orange frog spawn a little bit less. And um, also, you know, get rid of the flatworms. And it's kind of crazy because if you look at it right now, it looks like a super awesome, healthy coral, and it is, but it's a little bit light. And um, I just know that over time, if I don't do anything, those flatworms will just kind of go out of control. So we're gonna actually start by pulling out the orange frog spawn first, it's a nice branching orange frog spawn that I've had for many, many years. I've got frags of it in almost all the tanks. This one does not need any cutting. It just has a little bit of the flatworms, um, not as much as the torch. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy. And my dipping technique is basically to you know, roughly fill a two liter container about halfway and uh, I'm gonna give him a little dippy. So here you might be able to see in a warmer light that it's a it's a pretty yellow orange coral and it's just one cap or use one cap of revive this is kind of <clears throat> the baseline uh, coral dip I believe for most um, folks and it's just pine oil and some citrus extract and just one cap. And so one of the things that's also important about dipping is to, <clears throat> it doesn't take very long for those flatworms to start coming off, but you wanna mix it up pretty good. And look at, look at those flatworms just flying off. There's some chunks too, but there's a lot of flatworm. It's crazy how like these corals can get a lot of flatworms, but it's relatively benign, but they come off almost instantly. See all those buggers floating off and kind of wriggling all around? You capturing that okay? Yeah, I'm trying not to block the light. Yeah, me too. And the weird thing is, I don't know what it is about the flatworms, but um, they actually dissolve in revive. The two little fishies revive concentrate. <laughs> look, look you, you would never know there was that many freaking flatworms in here if you didn't uh, do a dip. Okay, so the one of the things about dipping euphilias is as they close up, they'll kind of bring in a lot of those flatworms with them. And like I said, this is not like the kind of pest or parasites. It's not like, it's not, First of all, it's not euphilia eating flatworms. Those guys are much bigger and way more vicious and I would not be so lackadaisical about it. But these guys are just irritants. But as the euphilias close up, um, ooh, goodness, look at all of those. Look at all those, man. You don't even see them until you dip. Goodness, I, I didn't even realize. I knew there were some, but I didn't realize there was that many. And it's just astounding that these corals, like they just live with them and they just open up just fine. Like no indication that this coral was struggling, but you see all those worms, man, they're just living among the, living amongst the, uh, the tentacles. And, uh, you know, kind of just keeping the coral from breathing well and man, Ooh, look at all that. I did not expect there to be so many on this guy. Like I said, he was opening just fine. But you definitely want to do the base. You just, you know, dipping corals is not a passive process. 
Wow, I did not realize there were so many in, on there. All right, well, I know that that's probably close to enough. So just to kind of wrap it up, just kind of give it a nice little swish in there. Be gentle, especially if the tentacles are still out. Wow. Man, this guy was already like opened up really large. So I wonder if he's gonna open up even bigger once I uh, put him back in the tank without all those pesky flatworms. Holy crap, would you look at that? Oh Lord. Man, I really was not expecting as many flatworms on that coral, but it's just like really astounding how many can be on that coral and it still just opens up almost completely fully. And like I said, this is something that I have to do uh, periodically with some of the colonies in here. Like we did it um, with this really nice uh, kind of frog spawn hybrid here, maybe like a year and a half ago because it had started to pull in and shown a little bit of irritation, but we haven't done it since. So it's not like a really persistent problem, but seeing how many flatworms came off that frog spawn really took me by surprise. So I'm curious to see how much are gonna be on the Holy Grail. Cause at night when it's closed up, I've been able to, to really catch some of the flatworms, but um, there we go. Just gonna gently pull him off just like that. Oh man. Look at that beautiful coral. He's been in place for probably, this is probably about two years of growth from a single uh, head. So I can already foresee that one of the biggest questions that we're, we're gonna get about dipping your corals, and in this case, Euphilia with the benign uh, flatworms, everyone wants to know how long you dip your corals for. And I think the precise answer to that question is it's way more important to dip for two minutes while diligently you know blasting and squirting and, and making sure to rinse and bathe every part of the coral i'd rather do that for two minutes than just to leave it in a solution for five minutes so um, i would say five minutes is the max but uh, for this application but make sure you've got a nice baster so you can really blast off the guys because we have a bunch of them that came off the uh the coral right away and as i'm basting the heads you can see even more just kind of slowly kind of coming off look at that look at this hardy coral man he's not even closing even though he's taking like a little botanical dip botanical bath Woo, look at all those flatworms okay all right now he now he beats the flat now he beats the frog spawn wow that is crazy crazy and then this is kind of like the final is giving it a little bit of swoosh giving a little bit of, of a of a back and forth motion. And you know what? I know for a fact, I'm not getting every single one, but like I said, these are somewhat benign and it takes them a long time to build up. So I'm just gonna give them a nice little rinse. All right, well, I think that's gonna get the most of it. And um, I do believe we have a winner when it comes to which one had the most flatworms. Look at that. Just looking at the coral, you would never think it had that many freaking flatworms, but uh, that's almost enough flatworms to eat if you had a, a flatworm only diet. So yeah, so now I'm just kind of examining the coral, just looking at the best place to frag. And like I said, man, I really want to get this as close to the rock scape as possible. So I'm probably just going to cut right there, right underneath where that tissue is going. Like I could do it anywhere, but I'm going to, like I said, I want to get this guy a lot closer to the rock. So I'm going to cut right there, right there, right there. Um, this is probably going to be my accessory frag that's going to go somewhere else. So um, a good way to frag corals like these that are a little bit delicate is to just kind of hold both pieces. There we go. Give it a little crack, and it comes apart. So this is gonna go somewhere else. Boop. And then um, I'll just kind of get to cut, get to, to frag in here a little bit more. One. Man, I'm out of a lot of frags of this guy. Two. It's really important too, when you're fragging these thin branch euphilias, don't do it too close to where the living tissue is at and make sure you have some good cutters because there is some crushing action. And it's really easy if I was to do it like right up here to get like a crack or a crushing right through the skeleton and you might ruin the entire coral. So what I'm actually doing is I'm fragging it a little bit lower down 
And then we're gonna take it to the bandsaw and get a nice clean cut where we want it. And yeah, I think that's about it. Another question people often ask is, <laughs> very often, is how long can the coral be out of the water? And I think the right answer is don't let it dry up. <laughs> don't let it dry up. All right. Okay. So, you know, this is a fancy coral, so I'm going to go ahead and crack open a fresh thing of Polyp Lap Premium Coral Glue. And the reason that hey, I like to cut the bases before I uh, re-glue it, just get a nice clean surface right there for maximum contact. So we're going to take this over to the display tank and kind of, you know, roughly put it back in place where it was. But now I'm going to spread them out a little bit more so they can take up a little bit more of a, the visual field in this particular aquarium. So let's see how we do it. So I'm just going to put, you know, a generous amount of glue right there. Oop. And just kind of start putting them in, in here. It's not, it's really not critical where they go because the polyps will open up a lot and fill that space. And that's one of the things I love about the Polyp Lab glue, it sticks so fast. Do you, you notice I didn't even turn off the flow for this one? So now there's one. Nice, nice, perfect little glob right there. Obviously the, uh, the, the degree of adhesion depends on your tank. If you try to put it in some really nasty, very algified section of your tank, it's not gonna stick. So you want a, a clean, clean surface. Ooh, that's gonna look really nice. Then I saved a couple of the smaller ones for that front section because I don't want it to shade the frog spawn too much. So let's trade here. Um, can that go right there? Yes, there we go. General rule when I'm uh, sticking these corals down is just kind of, once you get a good little spot, just kind of hold it there for five to 10 seconds, depending on your water flow. And then you got one more. This coral's been out of the water for, I don't know, say about five minutes, I guess, at the most. And uh, no problem. Got a nice little dab right on that coral. And I really kind of want to get him a little bit vertical here. Actually. Oopsie. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Well, so that was pretty easy, you know, uh, definitely did not expect, very surprised by the sheer abundance of flatworms on the frog spawn and the holy grail torch coral. Um, and uh, the fragging process went super smooth and gluing in place, it went super smooth. If you have issues with gluing corals in place, it's probably the quality or the age of your glue, right? So if you have a really old glue, it's not uh, gonna be as sticky and it's not gonna set as fast. So um, glues like the Polyp Lab individual little tubes that you can crack open very frequently, um, ensure that you always have the freshest glue possible. So you can see right here, um, 
I've, I was able to basically get all the core lights much closer to the rock. And when this just opens up, this is just basically going to be one solid band of nice holy grail torch coral polyps. And you can see we're getting a lot more light down below where the frog spawn is. And, um, you know, it's easy to, I guess, uh, obsess about the exact position of each polyp and core light. But over a period of two or three months, they're going to grow towards the light and they're going to fill that up and now I've kind of regained my little chasm here that is part of the aquascape. That was part of the reason for moving it over there. So we're going to let these coral polyps uh, sit and chill and I'm pretty sure within a few hours they'll be open up bigger and better than ever. One of the things I love about the reef aquarium hobby is you spend a lot of time observing your tank, but once in a while, you can do something that's extremely rewarding, such as manicuring your corals. The branching euphelia over time will grow and obscure the curves and the shape of your aquascape. So in this case, we were not only able to remove way too many flatworms. Like I knew there were some flatworms on there, but I didn't expect a whole flurry of them to be all throughout the dip. But most of all, I was able to shorten the branches and, it, and spread out the polyps and the core lights of the Holy Grail torch. So it's gonna get a lot more light per polyp and a lot more flow throughout them and uh, I was even able to have a couple extra frags to put in another tank and give one to cameraman Evan. Um, and I think overall the, the entire picture of the, the aquarium looks a lot better. So one thing I want you to take home is like, don't freak out if you see just a few flatworms on your euphilias, because clearly that infestation had been a long time coming. But definitely keep an eye on your corals. If you don't dip everything on the way into your tank, you might get some of these uh, semi-benign euphilias on your corals. Um, but most of all, watch your corals, observe your reef, and that's how you're gonna be in tune with the changes of your tank and your corals, and that's how you're gonna be alerted to when you need to do things to make things better, and that's why we're all here as a hobby to enjoy our tanks, um, not passively, but actively. So I hope you enjoyed this video of me just kind of doing a little handling on my Holy Grail style torch. If you have any questions, and between the dipping, the cutting, and the gluing, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have some, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the official Reef Builders YouTube channel. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.